Welcome to the channel. In this video, we're going to look through Index Imperium 1. And this is not going to be a detailed review where we look at every single rule, every single points cost. This is an overview video to give you guys a flavor of what is in here. So what is in here? Well, you can see on the bottom of the page, the main units that it covers, the main armies that it covers. We'll flip over the back. You've got a more detailed list here because the list at the back is a little bit longer than the list at the front. Like all the indexes, this one's broken down into a number of sections. At the start of the book, you have the Space Marine stuff. And it shows you all the units and all the things in the generic Space Marine armies. So these are all the units and all the things that are available to the generic Space Marines and their successor chapters. All the stuff that was previously covered in this book here. Then after you get through the generic sections with all the units in it, then there's a bit for the Imperial Fists, a bit for the Crimson Fists, a bit for the Black Templars, and so on and so on. Raven Guard, Salamanders, White Scars, and it's basically single uni unit entries for models that are currently available. And as there are no current models available for Iron Hands HQs, there are no Iron Hands at all. In this book they are not represented except in this picture here going back to the very start of the book these are the space marine rules for space marines and the no no fear they can re-roll morale tests here are their three three um, librarius disciplines which you can pick or roll for if you choose you can choose to roll for it says just pick them and they know smite as well so they know four and here's are the war gear options because in here it might say that the apothecary for example or the captain for example can take items from the sergeant thingy bob list or the melee weapons list or the special weapons list so then you uh, go from the data sheet entry to here see what they can take and once you've figured out what they can take, you flip all the way to the back of the book and see what that particular weapon does and see what its points cost is. So when I first picked up this book and first started flicking through it, it's so big, so thick, so intimidating, I felt intimidated. Um, and um, I had a look through and reading these sort of stuff. There was a couple of things that I really want, was interested to see, such as captains with five wounds, but in Terminator Cataphracty armor or the new Gravis armor, they have six wounds and toughness five. Look, points costs are not in the front of the book with all these data sheets. All the points costs for match play are kept in about five or six pages at the very back of the book. At the time of filming, there's a couple of data sheets in here, which I don't know what they are. Here's a Rhino. Here's a Rhino Primaris. Power level four, power level nine. Uh, probably twice as expensive in the points for the Primaris. Don't know what it is. And the Rhino Primaris can't, cannot transport Primaris Space Marines. I would have thought that this would have been a Rhino for normal Space Marines. It says it cannot transport uh, Primaris Space Marines, the new big chunky guys, but the Rhino Primaris can't do it either. And Land Raider Excelsior. I have no idea what a Land Raider Excelsior is, but it can't uh, transport Primaris models either. One of the things you'll notice when you flick through the data slates as well is all the wounds values and toughness values are all in here, but anything with a wounds value of 10 or more has this breakdown thing, which means the more they get damaged, here's a Land Raider, all Land Raiders have 16 wounds with a two up save, but the more it gets damaged, the slower it goes the worse its ballistic skill and attacks go. Attacks, uh, uh, vehicle attacking, that's to signify tank shock, this vehicle ramming into something. So for example, normal dreadnoughts, toughness seven with eight wounds, they don't have a breakdown or an ironclad dreadnought, toughness eight with eight wounds, doesn't have this breakdown thing, but there is a contemptor, and because the contemptor's got 10 wounds, toughness seven, its uh, movement and ballistic skill and attacks characteristics does change the more it gets damaged. This is something you'll see again and again and again. Below 10 wounds, it doesn't have this varying damage table. Normal Space Marines are still 13 points of pop and you load them out exactly the same way as we did before. If there's 10 of them, they get to take a special weapon and a heavy weapon. If there's less than 10, they get to take one or the other. Flyers such as the Storm Talon gunship become hard to hit. It's no longer sixes to hit them. You just, your opponent must subtract one from hit rolls for attacks that target this model in the shooting phase. Hard to hit, minus one to hit now. That sucks, but with ten wounds and a toughness of six, the Storm Talon suddenly got very resilient. 
Let's have a quick sneak peek at some of these things there. Rhino, 10 wounds, toughness 7, and move 6 to 10 plus. Um, has ability to self-repair. Roll a d6 at the start of your turns, and on a 6, the model repairs. Regains one lost wound. Smoke launchers work differently. Subtract one. Once you pop smoke, your enemy means minuses one to hit rolls when they're shooting at you. Explodes works differently. Any units within uh, six inches have a D3 mortal wound. So it's a sneak peek of the Rhino. Sneak peek of the Thunderfire Cannon. Thunderfire Cannon's heavy four D3. So roll four dice. Um, and each of them gets D3 shots. That's a lot of shots. At strength, find... Um, damage minus one, no AP value, and that's it. That's all it does. No more different shells. However, the weapon can fire ta can target units that are not visible to the firing model. So lots of shots, and you can fire it indirectly. Also, a Thunderfire cannon, its Tech Marine gunner can be deployed as a, must be deployed as a single group, uh, with each model within three inches of each other. From that point, the Thunderfire cannon and the Tech Marine gunner can act as separate units. They can split away. The gunner can continue to work into his uh, keypad there, work into his uh, iPhone and tell what the uh, cannon's doing and the cannon can go off and shoot stuff. They can split up. Interesting. Bikes have a flat out movement of 14, but they don't go 12 inches when they turbo boost. They just go a straight 6 inches when they advance. You get two wounds on bikes now, but there's nothing about jinking in here. So if you take a white scars list using these rules, White scars no longer jink. Talking about jink. When you go deeper into the book, you'll find rules for Blood Angels, Dark Angels, and Space Wolves. And Dark Angels have jink. And jink is when a unit advances, they get a 5 up invulnerable save to shooting attacks. That's it. But this is the Dark Angels stuff. They have their own um, psychic powers. Um, you look at this list here to see which of all of these options you can take in a Dark Angels list. Dark Angels can take Primaris um, Marines, but there are exceptions to what they can take. They couldn't take uh, Thunderfire Cannons before, and looking through this list, they can't take Thunderfire Cannons now. But what they do get is they get a lot of their own stuff. Spreadsheets for Azrael, Belial, Belial, sorry. Um, Deathwing, Deathwing Knights. Sneak peek to Deathwing Knights. They now have two wounds apiece. They still have their three up invulnerable save from their Storm Shields. Storm Shields work pretty much the same way as they did before. Um, it, they, you know, you've always got a three up save, unless there's a mortal wounds going on, because mortal wounds ignore invulnerable. But Deathwing Knights with two wounds and shields, fruity. As with the Dark Angels, we have the same with the Blood Angels, their own psychic powers, what units they can take, and then a bunch of uh, unit entries which are specific to Blood Angels. The same thing happens when we flip forward and have a look at the Space Wolves. Here's the Space Wolves stuff. So only when you look at the Space Wolves, it's getting really restricted now uh, to what they can take. However, they seem to have more units than the Blood Angels or Dark Angels combined, more specific things that only they can take. Next up is the Death Watch. And here's a list of the units that they can take. Here's a list of their war gear. So when you're flipping through and it says a sergeant can take this, you see which war gear options they can take. And they have stolen the special issue ammunition that was previously available to Sterngard. Obviously the rules for special issue ammunition um, have changed. But when we go back to the front of the book to see all these units available to all the Space Marine units and take a look at Sterngard Veteran Squad, they no longer come armed with special issue ammunition. Instead, they have a special issue bolt gun, which is strength 4, AP minus 2 at 30 inch range. That's it. Stone Guard have lost their specialist ammunition and have given it all up to the Death Guard. And special ammunition naturally does different things these days. After the Death Guard come the Grey Knights, and the Grey Knights can take very few options from all of the data sheets that we saw up here. The Grey Knights, in fact, cannot take Primaris Space Marines. The Grey Knights have no new models added to their force. And um, reading through the Grey Knights stuff, I didn't know which way to go, because Hammerhand is different now. Hammerhand is no longer plus two strength. It doesn't mean that um, uh, Grey Knights are suddenly wounded on twos. What happens when they cast Hammerhand now is they get an extra wound roll on their dice roll. Um, 
But Grey Knights can pick all three of these or smite. They still have Brotherhood of Psychers. All of these units in here, Terminators, um, uh, Grey Knight Terminators, for example, are Psychers. And they can pick any one of those unit, uh, abilities that I just showed you. Or they can take Smite, which only does one mortal wound rather than D3 mortal wounds. So suddenly I'm looking at these guys thinking, one, they're not taking Primaris, and two, their psychic powers appear to be nerfed a little bit. But then I remembered that every single Grey Knight has got a Force Sword. All of these Nemesis Force Swords do D3 wounds at minus 3 AP. I can see a lot of Grey Knight players there perhaps snapping off their Thunder Hammers and putting on swords again. Or maybe because you can only put one Thunder Hammer in a unit, maybe keep your Thunder Hammers on and uh, go with a four swords. And then if they have hammer hand cast, not only do these do D3 wounds, they'll do D3 plus one wound every time they smack someone in close combat. It was always brutal getting in combat with uh, Grey Knights because they've got force weapons all round. It's still gonna be very brutal getting in close combat with Grey Knights. And the other thing that's very interesting because Gate of Infinity has changed. Gate of Infinity, you pick some you unit off the battlefield and then you place them down all, immediately there's no more hanging around in ongoing reserves you place down immediately more than nine inches away from an enemy model without scattering so some of these things their weapons have seem to be stronger hammer hand seems to be weaker but gate of infinity seems to be uh, a juicy juicy ability um, i've got a ton of gray knights so um, it's going to be very interesting to see how they function going forward after get through all the army selection bit you get to this bit showing you how to make a battle forged army and then they give you this bit so you can go away and photocopy it at work somewhere because who goes to libraries these days or maybe have a photocopy at home and uh, shows you how to lay out your battle forged army and then it shows you all the points values of the space marines and their ranged weapons and then it goes on to all their war gear. The interesting thing about the points, I don't want to hover too long over those pages, but the interesting thing about the points, as a Space Marine player, we were used to everything being rounded numbers, but now you get points values like 63 points, 12 points, 17 points. Everything is very, very point specific. Someone's put a lot of thoughts into thinking um, uh, how much this stuff costs. You know, Points per model, one, 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 five, you know, it's... Interesting stuff. Dark Angels points value, Space Wolves points value, War Gear specific for Space Wolves, Death Watch and War Gear, Grey Knights and War Gear, and then it ends. And then we see Iron Hands, which have been forgotten. So this book feels a bit more vanilla than previous editions. I don't know where chapter tactics have gone. And I imagine Blood Angels, Dark Angels and Space Wolves, Grey Knight players will feel exactly the same as well. They're... Beloved chapters are reduced to a number of pages in this mighty tome. However, on the plus side, it is one big mighty tome with everything that you need in it. If I chuck together a Space Marine army with a Stormhawk into Zatcha and using these formations, I won't need three books anymore. I just need this one big mighty tome. So my initial impressions would be that 40k appears to have lost some flavour, but I don't know how it functions on the battle grid yet. This is just an overview when I've got a better, stronger idea of how stuff works. I'll let you know, but flyers, hitting them on fours or fives instead of sixes. White scars no longer jinking as they go across the battlefield, just one more wound. But they're not the only things that have grown a wound. Thunder Cavalry. They've grown a wound as well. So lots of interesting, lots of very specific things. You need to pick through it. It's interesting when you look at flyers as well, like it'll tell you in the flyer zone uh, what supersonic does, how to move your flyers, pivot it 90 degrees, then move it the distance, which is 20 to 40 inches. It's a long way, 40 inches. A uh, lot longer than we're typically used to. Um, so it even tells you in the unit entries how to move stuff around or whether any of their rules add to the core rule set or subtract from the core rule set. Anyway, that's a general overview of Imperium Index 1. As I said, just wanted to give you guys a quick overview so you can see what's behind the pages and you can see some of the stuff that's in here. It's going to be difficult to tell how this fully interacts with the rules, uh, with the units themselves, until you get them on the battle grid and start 
moving them around on your table. Um, but yeah, that's my overall first impressions. Thanks for watching. Happy Wargaming.